In the overview lesson, I showed you how to do speed changes using the speed option. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do a simple speed up and slow down using the frame number option. You may want to refer to the overview tutorial for overall detailed step-by-step -step information on the basic concepts. When speeding up or slowing down with the frame number option, you can have the first frame or the last frame start and end exactly where you want by using the frame number remap method instead of the speed percentage. In this example, let's say we want to make the first clip on the timeline be 2 seconds long. This first cut ends at 2.17 and we want to shorten this clip to end at exactly 2 seconds, but we don't want to lose any of the content of our clip, so we can add Twixter here as well. Because we are shortening the clip's duration, we don't need to make an interim sequence as described in the overview tutorial. We do need to know the frame number of the last frame instead of its timecode position though. We can go to the timecode display, right mouse click, and choose frames and see that 217 converts to frame 77. I'm going to switch back to timecode now. We can go to the filter settings in the viewer and we go to the first frame of the cut and set a keyframe of zero at the first frame. So the first frame of the source will be remapped to the first frame of the output clip. Now we can stop the playhead at two seconds and then in the dialog box we can tell Twixter to put frame 77 at two seconds. Now our first cut will play the original two seconds and 17 frames in two seconds and we didn't lose any content we just sped the shot up a bit. We can now drag the out point of the clip to two seconds. The next thing I want to do is fit my five second shot into a gap that is seven seconds. I need to slow my shot down to fit into this gap. Twixter can help me with that and normally in Final Cut Pro when you slow a shot down this much you might get jerky and unpleasant looking artifacts. But with Twixter, we can actually create better in-between frames with our proprietary tracking technology and motion vectors. Let's take a look at how we do this. In order to gain flexibility to make this original clip longer or shorter, I'm going to start with this nested sequence, which may include an extension of the original clip by copying it several times onto the timeline, as we explained in the overview tutorial. This will guarantee that I don't have to redo the work if I find that I suddenly needed to make the clip longer instead of shorter. Let's start by going to the last frame of our original sequence within the interim sequence. It is at 5 seconds. We want to know what that is in frames and since we're working with Twixter's frame number remap method, we can simply switch to frame numbers by right mouse clicking in the timecode display to switch to the frame number display. Now we can see that the last frame of our sequence is frame 150. Note, even if the Twixter clip is moved on the timeline to start somewhere other than zero, the first frame of a clip as far as Twixter is concerned is at frame zero. So it is useful to always place your clip into an interim sequence starting at timecode zero so that you can find the proper frame numbers that Twixter needs. We can switch back to timecode display now if you feel more comfortable working in timecode. We just need to enter the values for Twixter and frame numbers. We can place our nested sequence over the gap lining up the first frame of our nested or interim sequence with the last frame of the first cut. Now we go to the first frame of the third cut on the other side of the gap and cut our interim sequence here. We can now drop our interim sequence into the gap. Let's add Twixter to our clip by going to Effects and Video Filters and dragging Twixter to our clip from here. Now I'll select the clip and hit Return and go to the Filter tab in the viewer. Let's take a look at the effect controls here under the filter tab. We're going to leave the display on Twixtered output. 
Since we want the first frame of our cut to be at 201, we will stop the playhead here at 201 and set the first keyframe at 201. We will enter frame 0 in the dialog box. Frame 0 is the first frame of the sequence since Twixter, like Final Cut Pro, starts counting at 0. Frame 0 of our original sequence will now be at 201. Now we go to the last frame of the gap, which is 9 seconds. And we want the last frame of our cut here, which is frame 150, as we found out by switching to the time code earlier in this tutorial. We enter 150 in the dialog box for frame number, and this makes another keyframe. Now frame 150 of our cut will be at 9 seconds, and the result will be slowed down to fill the gap. It was that easy to fill this 7 second gap with our 5 second shot. We can render the sequence now and see the result. So, this is how you speed up and slow down using the frame number option in Twixter within Final Cut Pro.